So today we celebrate the feast of Saint Scholastica. She is the sister of Saint Benedict. And I always look forward to this, this particular feast because in the office of readings, that is uh, the prayer of the church, the church that priests and religious pray and the faithful are encouraged to pray, uh, the divine office, in the office of readings, there is a reading from the dialogues by Saint Gregory the Great. And it talks about an encounter that Saint Scholastica had with her brother, Saint Benedict. And they lived, um, let's see, they were born in Italy around 480, and she died around 547. And so in that 500 year range, they were south of Rome in this area known as Monte Cassino, not very far from where our patron, St. Thomas Aquinas, will be born about another 500 years after that. So this is a, an account taken from the Dialogue of St. Gregory the Great. Scholastica, the sister of St. Benedict, had been consecrated to God from her earliest years. She was accustomed to visiting her brother once a year. He would come down to meet her at a place on the monastery property, not far outside the gate. One day, she came as usual, and her saintly brother went with some of his disciples. They spent the whole day praising God and talking of sacred things. As night fell, they had supper together. Their spiritual conversation went on, and the hour grew late. The holy nun said to her brother, Please do not leave me tonight. Let us go on until morning talking about the delights of the spiritual life. Sister, he replied, what are you saying? I simply cannot stay outside my cell. When she heard her brother refuse her request, the holy woman joined her hands on the table, laid her head on them, and began to pray. As she raised her head from the table, there were such brilliant flashes of lightning, such great peals of thunder, and such a heavy downpour of rain that neither Benedict nor his brethren could stir across the threshold of the place where they had been seated. Sadly, he began to complain, May God forgive you, sister, what have you done? Well, she answered, I asked you, and you would not listen. So I asked my God, and he did listen. So now go off, if you can, leave me and return to your monastery. Reluctant as he was to say of his own free will, he remained against his will. So it came about that they stayed awake the whole night, engrossed in the conversation about the spiritual life. It is not surprising that she was more effective than he, since, as John says, God is love. He was absolutely right that she could do more as she loved more. Three days later, Benedict was in his cell. Looking up to the sky, he saw his sister's soul leave her body in the form of a dove, and fly up to the secret places of heaven. Rejoicing in her great glory, he thanked Almighty God with hymns and words of praise. He then sent his brethren to bring her body to the monastery and laid in the tomb that he had prepared for himself. Their minds had always been united in God. Their bodies were to share a common grave.